Well, cracking down on the czars, my next guest wants to bring them to Capitol Hill to testify before Congress. He wants to know what the heck they're doing and who's keeping an eye on them. Congressman Pat er, McHenry is a Republican from North Carolina. Um, it's interesting. Uh, any reaction uh, to your idea? It's not, you know, that bad an idea. These guys control a lot of money, a lot of power, a lot of influence. You, you might as well have a right to talk to them. What's the reaction been? Well, I haven't really heard from the administration yet. I don't think the president uh, is intent on letting them testify, nor uh, the Democrats in charge of Congress really want to have this discussion. Uh, but my constituents want to have this discussion, and my Republican colleagues are very interested in what I've proposed. And I think we'll have some Democrats come around to it once they hear from their constituents. Yeah, but why wouldn't your Democratic colleagues like it, too? Because there is this issue called separation of powers, and, and they've got a president now who who not only has a cabinet accountable and answerable and approvable by you folks, um, and now these are, as who many argue, have a lot more power than even the cabinet members who, account who are accountable to no one. Well, look, you know, Dan Bourne, a Democrat congressman from Oklahoma, even Robert Byrd, they've expressed uh, grave concerns about these czars, uh, about uh, the separation of powers issues that you touched on. And in fact, the Article 2, Section 2 functions uh, that the Congress has responsibilities for, for high ranking administration officials. The real question, though, Neil, is are these individuals really functioning as basically super cabinet secretaries, like Carol Browner, who uh, is setting environmental policy and coordinating not just a Department of Energy, but also uh, the EPA and their actions. If they're super cabinet agencies or super cabinet secretaries uh, in and of themselves, and I think they should be Senate confirmed. And I think the senators should be very aware of it and concerned about their prerogatives as well. But isn't it a slippery slope, Congress? I mean, Richard Nixon essentially did this when he when he created a national security advisor position for a close confidant named Henry Kissinger who ended up doing an end run around the Secretary of State Rogers at the time. And the, the rationale w was that he needed his own foreign policy confidant, I guess. And we all know what happened in retrospect. So we know how these things mushroom. Where do you see all of these czars going? What's really being done here? Well, I mean, look at the Obama administration. Um, it, it, basically, what you're saying is, uh, you know, the comparison. Some people say, well, the government spends money, and it's spending money today. Well, yeah, the government spends a lot of money, but Obama is making all the past look like child's play. Sure, there have been a couple czars here and there. It didn't make it right then, but the fact that Obama has dozens, uh, we don't even know the number uh, for certain because the White House won't ad admit uh, how many czars they've appointed. Look, th th this gets back to the basic constitutional functions uh, of Congress and the executive branch, accountability, transparency, openness, very basic functions. And if you have people that are unconfirmed, unvetted, I mean, look at the Van Jones incident of the Green Job Czar, right, right. who clearly wasn't even vetted by the White House. It shows that uh, they were really not intent on openness, transparency, and adhering to the basic functions that previous administrations have adhered to. Well, Republican or Democrat, what you're raising is a good issue. These guys have a great deal of power, and then they should at least answer to the, to the folks who, who are elected by folks. So we'll see. Congressman, thank you very much. Hey, thanks so much, Neil.